Hey, I'm Cyclin, and I know I'm a little bit late with this, but after the reveal of two days ago night, so into the night of yesterday basically for me, we got a scarab and yesterday, well, every time I had, I did put in, in making atlas trees, theoretical atlas trees, utilizing those new scarabs. Now I'm not gonna go over every one in this video. The description in the description you're gonna find a link to the spreadsheet so you can take a look at the ones you're interested in. I just want to mention a few ones that I specifically look very forward to, to testing. My goal is to at least test everything on this list eventually in next week, but of course everything has to be in order. There needs to be priorities to be set, there needs to be based on the builds, but that's for then. At least, if you want to take any of these, they are theoretically good. Practically, we need to see how available the scarabs are, how good they actually are in comparison and not just in a void. Alright, starting with the first interesting one is an Exai Altar Farming. Now, there are two scarabs that are noticeable for this one. Actually, let me zoom. I'm ready to zoom in 150%. That's good enough then. So there are two scarabs. One is magic pack size. Now, not all packs of an influence are magic or rare, but there are a decent amount of magic packs. So if this one is, because it looks like a rusted one, I assume this one will be fairly common. So we can assume we can use this one. And then there is one that could be a bit more rare, but it's the influence scarab of the hordes, giving us 40% influence monster pack size. Now, Wandering Path and Growing Horse is gone, but with this and the buffed nodes on top of the Exarch, we now have these nodes basically provide Wandering Path again. So we have on top of our 20, we got another 20, that's already 40% pack size. With this, is it can go to 80, and if we then have another 20 pack size normally on the map, basically it's just double the enemies for at least our influence packs. So it makes it very interesting. Now with that high density of enemies, on top of that we can add other things. But to, it needs to be noted that this looks like a gilded scarab. These, they're no longer called gilded. They are no longer uh, tier, but they are likely a less common variant. So the idea of this tree is not to utilize unraving visions because we're gonna have a lot of altars, a lot of enemies. We're gonna be utilizing the increase in scarab drops and the beyonds to because of the lot of enemies we should get a lot of beyond packs this tree is guaranteed beyond it exact influence and we want to run this on mausoleum or jungle valley so we are looking at singular focus getting a bit of notes for map drop chance you can pick up more notes but i try to spend as little amount of needed for this tree and on top of it we also get guaranteed nico with packed with energy so we can get some resonators which aren't really worth much early on but they can add a little bit of currency and because it's guaranteed and we are getting the boost in speed and damage from pack with energy this is now free additional value now they aren't guaranteed guaranteed but we have a nico chance of 20 40 and a 64 so if you would pick up these two nodes that is 72 that is 80 and then you would also need to grab these to guarantee it. But already with a 64, we have it on most of our maps. So this is, the trees aren't perfect, they have adjustment room. But this is a base strategy and I really like this one for an early farming. It should allow you to do this basically on any map. And once you have your completion done, you just enable singular focus. And you do it on Moiseleum or you do it on Jungle Valley and you're gonna be good. Another note I specifically want to mention is invasive adversaries. A more 10% mo more monster packs considering of difficulty in rewarding monsters. Now if we already have a lot of monster and a lot of pack size in our map, I think this note is going to be especially strong. But we have to see of course what is the rewarding and what means their difficulty. Is these the unique invasive monsters? Is this going to be magic? Is these going to be rare enemies? But Keep an eye on this note, this might be very powerful. All right. The next tree I want to mention is again an early farming. This would be looking at Essence on a T6 map. And the scarabs you would be using on this one is purely Essence scarabs, but they would be a bit spread out. So if I look here on Essence, let me quickly show the scarabs I'm talking about. 
Am I blind? Likely. Where did the essence scarabs go? Abyss essence here. So we have, I don't know why it shows at the top, the base essence scarab which gives us two additional essences. The map device should be giving also two essences. So these are six plus one or seven essences in our maps. Then we use one of the ascent making them a tier higher. By going into yellow map, so we look at T6, T7 maps to farm this. We can get tree cake, so this makes it able to get naturally deafening essences. And then if we combine it with the stability one, they cannot be released and cannot do unchanged. So we get transform, which means we have a chance for the corrupted essences like delirium, get different essences of a different, uh, then if uh, there were bad essence on it, they could get better. And upgrading, meaning we have a chance of even more deafening essences on it. I think this is going to be a very good early combination. And of course, there is a consideration of calcification uh, later on. I have a high investment one. Because this has a ringed icon, I think this is going to be a lot more uncommon. And we don't know how uncommon, how expensive. So I've left this one as high investment. If it uses up to guild, it can be low or mid investment based on the overall in the overall way of the strategy works. But we just take all the essence nodes. We do take some of the scarab nodes. At least I like this one and this one to have. It's tried to be very low passive points on this tree. We grab the shrine stuff just to get a bit of speed in. And again, we grabbed invasive adversaries. Other things aren't really worth it because we are on T6. We don't want to go too high on the investment uh, on the map tier because it makes it more difficulty. So this is again another early strat that I think with the scarabs, essence looking very, very powerful once you are in there. The next thing I think is going to be really interesting, of course, is Legion. I love Legion. It's an amazing thing. And there's a lot of stuff you can do with Legion. First of all, it will technically be possible to have six Legions in your map. This alone sounds hilarious. But I don't want to talk about the Legion Scarab itself. This one is every free spot is going to be filled with a Legion Scarab. That much is obvious. What I want to talk about is Scarab of Officers. Now, command is not going to be good. I also don't know how good emblems are going to be. If emblems are worth dog shit because of the way five ways got nerfed and nobody wants to run five ways anymore, we no longer need to get Marrakesh and Templar emblems. We're going to take Eternal Empire because this is the easiest legion to do. It is in a linear form, meaning the enemies are evenly spaced. If you have explosions, it's going to be good. You know exactly where their positioning is. And the general is the easiest general to kill. There is no weird jumping on him. There is no weird phasing on him. It's the easiest general to do. So we will just be going for this one. If, however, the emblems are still worth something, we're going to go for a classic Marrakesh Templar. And then we run this. But yeah. In scope of the command, we never really wanted the generals, especially early on where the power level is low. Scope of the Zikima. I, again, I, we don't want only Marrakes. We need a balance, and usually this was good enough. And then, Scarab of the Tur Eternal Conflict. This thing reads so absurd. I don't know how much the reward will be scaling with this, but I will definitely try it out. But keep an eye on this one. But because, again, it's winked, it looks very expensive. So the Scarabs of our choice for Legion are going to be Legion, 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 and more Legion. So we already have four Legions, a fifth Legion with our Atlas. And technically, because we can block these things, there is a chance for a sixth Legion, but I don't know how big the chance for the Legion is. But this should make it very likely to have daily mirrors and a high stash. And we are running high maps. We are running the maps fast. We're going to be wanting on dunes. I think it's going to be really good. So we have five Legions guaranteed every map. On top of now Scarab of Officers. Previously polished Legion Scarabs offered us an additional War Horde. Additional War Horde, because with this node, has been two rewards. So one War Horde per Legion site meant two War Hordes meant four rewards. Now, this Surgeon thing, they have already a base chance to have a reward. Then we have Logistic Support giving them uh, basically um, a 
no wait, they have an tw additional 20% chance to get one reward if they don't go for the 1 in 10 for 2 rewards. So with logistical support, with 5 surgeons on each side, meaning 10 surgeons per legion, I also think this one, yeah, additional chance to have a reward, there's just a very high likelihood that this thing is going to be way more overpowered than the Warhorde. This also means that if rare legion uh, magic fighting, again, like chasing those loot conversions is a thing this league, which might be, this is going to be way more powerful than a Polish legion scarab for that. It just has, and wait, sorry, one more thing, and Inspired Learning and Headhunter also gets buffed by this, because this means there are more enemies we can kill to steal their buffs from. Meaning we have even better overall uptime on Headhunter buffs or Inspired Learning buffs. This is just so much better. So for early Legion farming, three normal Legion Scarabs, putting us to three, one from the map device, one from the Atlas is five Legions, it's gonna be a wonderful time Legion farming. We just need to see how the rewards are. Rest of the tree, map sustain, influence package, again, invasive adversaries, I think it's gotta be good. And because we are running Legion, we do want to block a bit. Now, next tree is gonna be Blight. I personally think, especially on a more generic approach, Blight is a very powerful early strat. We can pick up Fungibloom fairly early, and this one already gu almost guarantees us a Blight every map. And if we on top pick up these two Blight encounter nodes, this is six nodes to guarantee a Blight in a map. On top of that, we have immune response, sturdy connections, epidemiology. It, it sounds very easy to get Blights in your map that drop Blighted maps. Keep in mind that if you do Blight, don't pick up Singular Focus. I did learn that the hard way last week when I tested it for a bit. You're going to lose out of your Blights if you have Singular Focus because the Blighted maps aren't getting converted to the ones that can drop. They just don't drop and you get a bit of currency instead. We again want our influence package and later on we can also pick up the big Blight nodes here. Getting the chance for the oil extractor and getting the jewelry meaning we can get even more golden oils. And we can buff it with a bit of shrines. Especially because we can, if we see a good shrine for damage, we can keep it before we do the blight. So we then pick the shrine, we go to the blight, we do the blight and we get the loot. The scarabs for blight, I have to say, also look very interesting. If, especially if we can focus on toxic sewers or waste pool where we're going to have one to two lanes, we're going to have a lot of blight reward chests. Early on you want, you can use blight on any map, that's a great part early. It is good on anything, it's gonna give you maps, it's gonna give you enemies, it's gonna give you XP, it's gonna give you blighted oils, which you mean then can anoint, you can still, there's a higher demand for blight oils early, and then we can combine it with scope of bounty, getting a 40% chance to open chest again, with like 6 chests, if you get lucky on a single, or let's say 4 chests, 4 chests with a 40% chance to open, meaning every, not third, uh, something between every second to every third map, we gonna be opening again. This is gonna be a lot of extra rewards and gonna be a, resulting in a lot of extra oils. And then we can combine it with the scarabs of the oils and technically a scarab of the blooming. However, scarab of the blooming, it's a ring. This might be scarce, this might be expensive, and also it might be hard. But the three additional unique bosses. And gonna be guaranteeing, wait, which tree was it? Here. Gonna be guaranteeing another jewelry. So it, it can be very powerful, albeit very hard to do. It looks very, very interesting. Also, you can directly get Blight Ravaged maps, which should be selling for more. But again, this is something for later. Early on, you can easily just do with two blue bounties and one scalp of oils. And you just have an amazing time with your Blights. Right. Two more trees I want to cover. One tree I wanted to cover is a pseudo magic finding. Now this has been used by groups before, but I think with the changes to, well, with the addition rather than changes to the anarchy scarabs and the torment scarabs, this looks very, very powerful. The idea is we can use or we don't have to use Twist of Fates if our build is strong enough for it, but by adding the additional quantity of items dropped by tormented enemies 
combining with Exiled Will, making Rogue Exiled's Tormented. And then we have the idea of we could use Torment of Release. So if we kill a Rogue Exile, now it has a chance to set up the Spirit again. If that we combine that with the chance that Exiles appear in pairs, or have a ch and or have a chance to be a m m giant road exile, which then splits into other exiles, meaning they know sp he splits, the ghost gets released, the ghost reaffects the enemy, and we get even more quantity. I think this is gonna be a quantity loop in on itself. They're just gonna get a massive amount of drops, especially early on when you want to do chaos recipe. This is gonna be a great source for it. Now I don't know how difficult this will be, so keep this in mind. We can also combine it with the Eat of World influence to get quantity on the map or get a chance to drop stuff on the map or do currency on the map. It has a lot of potential. If you don't like this, of course, we are already on the left side as well. We can just take the exile nodes instead. And lastly to note, we can potentially self-sustain our scarabs with this by having more likely for anarchy and torment scarabs and having the note that here yeah, unique enemies have a higher chance to drop scarabs, more scar more unlikely scarabs can be found, more scarabs from rares, and here more increased chance for scarabs. I think this is a high potential tree that we just need to see how exactly it plays out and how difficult it is to run. But I'm looking very forward to seeing what exiles have to offer now that we can target focus them in this massive way. Lastly, the final tree I want to talk about is Harbinger. Harbinger has very serious potential. Now, of course, we can just add more Harbingers to our maps, but I want to talk specifically about Harbinger Skirberg of Discernment having the chance to drop a single Turinthy shard. Now, if this is how I assume it is, the way it is going to work is if a Harbinger would be dropping let's say alchemy shard is the most valuable shard the most uncommon shard this uh, have this having us dropping all shards are gonna be having uh, gonna be alchemy shards but if this highest var if the most unlikely shard is a fracturing shard this having will only drop stacks of fracturing shards if we combine that with the powerful having that drops more shards meaning a higher likelihood of rare shards, if this is working how I assume it is, these in combination should result in a lot of fracturing orbs and eventually run over a long enough time also a mirror shard. Now the final one, chance for currency shards drop by harming a scenario that are duplicated, again it's a ringed, it might be expensive, but if this works how, it's, how I think it's going to work, we just can use this on top and we're gonna get a lot of high valuable shards, especially because they're all just gonna get duplicated, meaning even more shards. So Harbinger might now be a primary focus thing. And again, because of the way of how it works, we can just add beyond on this, guaranteeing beyond on the tree, meaning we just have free beyond on top of it and Harbinger spawns a lot of enemies in a high density area, meaning it's just gonna result in a lot of beyond enemies as well. But yeah, that is really everything there is to it. Now, again, I have more trees here. Feel free to check them out. Give your opinions on them. I take any feedback on these is appreciated. I'm going to be taking at least some time on Friday to rework the early trees. So feel free to check any changes. I'm going to note them beneath them. If I ended up doing the changes, there is a possibility that Unraving Visions might not be needed at all because we can get the Scarabs dropped early because there should be more un uh, more common and there might be a reasoning that we want to not use it at all or only use it very temporary and then immediately spec out of it again once we have our basically our leak mechanic in our maps now all that being said video has been long enough if you got any feedback any comments any discussion you want to do the comments are open my discord's open i'm gonna be streaming definitely launch on twitch i'm gonna be doing a practice one at least today and a practice one at least tomorrow. Feel free to join, feel free to chat. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.